I thought I should make a quick message and a quick uh, small video just to say something that I've been wanting to say um, about religion. So, you have the three denominations, Judaism, Christianity, you know, Islam. I don't know everything about religion, obviously. I'm not a professional. I'm not a pro. I still have a lot of learning to do. I don't know everything. And, uh, you know, I've had, my parents have said, oh, you, you, my parents have you make, made comments like, oh, yeah, you think you know everything. You you think you, you, you know more than us and stuff like that. But I know we all have learning to do. We all have knowledge to attain spiritual wisdom is the most important wisdom in this entire life. You have to have some kind of, you have to know your inner soul, your inner spirit. You have to know your inner self of who you are as a divine being. And not only as a human, not only in your human personalities, not only in your, you know, the way you do things, not only in your likes or dislikes, it's not only, oh yeah, I like this movie and I like this cartoon, or, um, you know, I like the color or whatever, you know. My favorite colors have always been red and black. Um, but that's not the point. Those are human qualities. We all have a divine higher self within, but it's not known to many people. Most people just realize or think that they're humans and nothing else. And, um, whether they believe that or not is on them. But, um... We, 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 I think we do come from a higher place, wherever that place may be, and whether it's a part of the universe or a part of, um, a, a, a type of heaven, uh, the Nag Hammadi talks about many aeons and many kingdoms and heavens, that there's actually more than one, but the human eye cannot see and the human mind cannot understand or perceive. We can to a certain ability if you're spiritually enlightened or um but to be spiritually enlightened is not an easy process it just doesn't come to people and it doesn't it's a very hard learning process and a lot of people you know make 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 things like talking and communicating with entities you know so easy but you have to go through a certain process of pain and suffering uh, probably at a certain level like I have to be able to get to a certain point in your spirituality or your spiritual walk with your god or your goddess or with your own divine self or even just trying to learn new things i noticed you know they um some people on youtube say that christianity is dying and some people say that it's rising greatly the biggest religion right now is islam the second biggest is christianity and i think the third biggest is I'm not really sure what the third or fourth biggest is. Um, Judaism is not the third biggest. It's one of the smaller subgroups. But um, things like Christianity holidays, um, like, for example, Christmas. Cr the, the original Christmas was a pagan holiday to um, honor and to respect um, the god Mithra. I think, is one of the gods, the god Odin, and several other gods of fertility and love. Fertility being a blessing that humans are able to procreate and have children. And um, there's ancient myths surrounding um, the tree. And the star represents many different things, like the star with the five points represents the five elements, earth, air, fire, spirit. I always forget the fifth, I've always forget the, the last one. And our bodies, when you put your arms out and your legs out, that represents the star. Our bodies are the star. If you put your arms directly out like this, you put your arms directly out like this, both your arms. Our heads are the point going upward towards heaven, going upward towards the sky, the sky being a lower heaven. And you have your feet spread out like this. We form, the, our body, human bodies form in uh, the star. We, we form a five-pointed star, which represents the five elements. Um... 
Christianity has blasphemed a lot of what was, you know, considered holy and sacred and honorable to um, people that respected earth and nature and people that call themselves pagans, which were, you know, not evil people. Um, I'm not a professional in knowing all these things, but I do know some things. And I do know, you know, the five-pointed star doesn't represent Satan until recently, a couple, you know, hundred years ago. That's rec That's the most recent um, thing that they, they put it in. And, and religion, they steal from other religions. So Christianity, Judaism, Islam, they take information from other ancient religions. If you look into the history of Christianity, it go when it goes into Judaism, the Judaism, they stole ancient scriptures and writings and ancient beliefs from the Canaanites, Sumerians, uh, Palestinians, um, and probably ancient beliefs of the 12 tribes of Israel. They formed it into their own belief and they formed it into their own book and created something that the government and law would want to use to control people. So they would use what is truth uh, about the God of Israel and combine it with other truth from other religion and form their own truth by mixing the truth up and changing it, um, changing words around and mixing it up in a certain way where it forms a new book and a new identity and a new religion that you would call Judaism. I think it was in the Canaanite religion, if you go back to their scriptures and how the Bible was formed, they called the Most High Baal, which was, which was the god of sacrifice, or Baal, and which means Lord, Lord of Lords and King of Kings, represents Baal in, the, in um, definition. Look it up in definition, you know, look, at, look up Baal means Lord, or Lord means Baal. And you'll find some information on that. So when people pray in the name of the Lord, they have no idea what Lord actually means, which actually means Baal. And people would sacrifice um, humans and animals to Baal. And it's definitely not a god that I would ever work with. Another thing I wanted to mention <clears throat> is I noticed that Christians are the only religious people that are receiving visions from Jesus Christ about the end of the world, the apocalypse, the antichrists. And Christians are getting whacked out with crazy visions of Trump being the antichrist and Barack Obama being the antichrist. Not only visions, but dreams. Um, it's plain fucking obvious to me that they're not. I don't know, it, it, it's kind of common sense to me that they're not. So I think that they are, a lot of Christians are receiving um, false visions and dreams against two men that really have, that are not Satan in the flesh. They're just people that made mistakes. I think it's a real fuck up for Trump and Barack Obama to allow immigrants into the U.S. It's a happy life and wonderful moment for an immigrant to find a better home and a better future in the U.S., but all the while it fucks up the U.S.A. because there are more and more and more homeless people um, every time I go outside to the park next door to me, there are more homeless people, at least two families now. Um, and there's always two different kinds of families. And sometimes there's more. And if you go to certain cities in other areas of the U.S., go to San Francisco, there's more homeless people there. Go to... Well, I, I'm not really that big of a traveler yet, but... um. People are invading from other countries into other countries that are not their own because the USA military wants to destroy other countries and steal things. And, and the USA government has been stealing items and things from other countries. Why do you think the USA has so many things, so much food, so much clothes, but yet other countries don't have hardly a damn thing? Other countries don't have jobs, don't have enough clothes, don't have enough uh, food. Because the U.S. military is, is probably doing some evil 
They're they're taking down, you know, other countries that they shouldn't have be messing with and and children getting involved in wars because of religion and being killed in religious wars and the US government is not an innocent or loving government when it comes to war. Now, I'm not super, super genius when it comes to politics. I did get an A-plus in government and in politics, um, but I don't even know if I remember that dumb shit. All I know is, plain, plain and simple, religions have been creating wars for thousands of years, the three main religions, obviously. And But you never hear Satanists creating wars or threatening hell or threatening um, burning or killing people. But yet, I'm noticing in uh, the news and on YouTube videos, um, people that are committing homicide and killing their families happen to be proclaimed Christians that are losing their damn minds. So think about that. Look up households that claim that God spoke to them and then they end up killing all their children because God told them to. And you find these women that are drowning their children ending up on the news or... And then, uh, you know, shooting themselves in the head or ending up in prison because they believe that God spoke to them and told them to kill their children. And that's a perfect example of shit from the Old Testament where God would tell the prophets to go kill thousands or millions of people. And those prophets would actually win in the end. And you would have slaughtered people, countless of people, dead everywhere. It's still happening in other countries. It has not stopped. It's not old shit. The Syrians and Palestinians have been getting their ass beat and um, having their families killed and land stolen from Israel for thousands, if not thousands and thousands of years, and fighting over land and killing each other and bombing, bombing each other. And the whole Middle East has been in war, and Islam still follows Old Testament Torah laws. They want Sharia law to control the U.S. eventually, and that they're hoping that they can get into the government and control the U.S. government secretly. Um, you know, and of course they'll come, you know, in love and light. If oh yeah, I'm a Muslim, but Mus you know, Islam is peace and all this bullshit, and they all lie and they all deceive because Allah is the greatest of all deceivers, as the Book of Sirach in in the Quran, says Allah is the greatest of deceivers. And it even says in the Bible that God created spirits of deceivement to um, bring a false lying tongue into his prophets, that they may deceive the nations, as I have read before in the Bible. As 1 Kings chapter 22, verse 20 through 23, speaks about God bringing a lying spirit unto people in verse 20 in first kings and the lord said who will entice ahab into attacking ramoth gilead and go into his death there one suggested this and another that in verse 21 finally a spirit came forward stood before the lord and said i will entice him entice meaning tempt him verse 22 by what means the lord asks i will go out and be a deceiving spirit in the mouths of all the prophets he said you will succeed in enticing him said the lord go and do it so he used a prophet to deceive and verse 23 so now the lord has put a deceiving spirit in the mouths of all these prophets of yours the lord has decreed disaster for you so the lord tempts the Lord creates temptation, which means he entices people, as 1 Kings chapter 22, verses 20 and 23 speaks about. By what means the Lord asked, I will go out and be deceiving, send a deceiving spirit in the mouths of all his prophets, he said. You will succeed in enticing him, meaning tempting him, said the Lord, said the Lord. Go and do it. So now the Lord has put a deceiving spirit in the mouths of all these prophets of yours, of yours. The Lord puts a deceiving spirits in the prophets. The Lord God himself. That should wake you the fuck up and get the fuck out of Christianity and Judaism.
that is showing you. They're telling you in the Bible. How can you be blind and deceived and tr and, and, and faithfully believe a, some bullshit fucking Bible that's going to deceive and destroy you from the inside out? Trick your mind into thinking that God is perfect and holy. This is the beast. This is the dragon. This is more evil and worse than Satan himself. This God is the creator of Satan. He's the God of the deceiver Satan, and he is the greatest deceiver who is even more deceitful than Satan himself. And he is the God, the God of Israel is the one that tempts based on the Bible. Like I, you know, and like I said, if this is just a man-made book, if it is, if the Bible is made by man and by law and by kings, and let's just say that they weren't given authority or visions or dreams from God, and maybe they just wrote the Bible to control the population and masses. That would mean that men are the evil ones and that God would still be perfect and holy. So that would mean no one truly knows God. That would mean that God would be perfect, but that men would be deceiving other men. Humans would be deceiving other humans. And I'll, I will say that that is also a possibility, because if God is perfect like people believe, then that would mean preachers and churches would need to be destroyed, and humans should never speak, um, you know, for God again if they're going to be Christian or Jew or or Islam, because they are deceiving people by de by believing in a lie. <clears throat> why do why should you believe in a lie and deceive people? Why why should you utter a prophecy and destroy people? In Ezekiel chapter fourteen verse nine, and if the prophet and if the prophet to send um, and utter a prophecy, I, the Lord, have enticed, tempted that prophet. And I will stretch out my hand against him and destroy the prophet from among the people of Israel. So he's saying he's going to dece deceive you, a lying, deceiving spirit, into his own prophets and then destroy his own prophets from is among Israel. So if you're working for the Lord, he's telling you in Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 9, God himself will destroy you after he uses you to deceive the nations. Again, and if the prophet to utter a prophecy, I, the Lord, have enticed the prophet, and I will stretch out my hand against him and destroy him from among the people of Israel. Why the fuck do you want to be Jewish and Christian and claim that he's holy? Read your Bible for crying out loud, please, people. Again, the word enticed means tempted. Who tempts man? Oh, you blame it on Satan, but God is telling you straight to your face. God is the one tempting. God is the one destroying. God is the one that's going to kill, steal, and destroy. And the Bible tells you this clear as fucking day. Read your Bible. Christians, wake up. Wake up. Before it's too late. And again, in Second Thess Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11, For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they may believe in a lie. Why would you want to worship a God of Israel who's going to send temptation, put a lying, deceiving spirit of, of deception in a prophet's mouth to deceive the believers and the sheep that are trying to obey God? And then in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11, is telling you he's going to send you a strong delusion so that you may believe a lie. Christians, Jews, it's time to wake the fuck up. Seriously, because Judaism, Islam, and Christianity are violent, evil, manipulative religions being controlled by kings, being controlled by government officials, being controlled by an evil book of deception, lies, murder, chaos, and sin. And God says, you know, don't sin, but he's the one that's making people sin. He's the one that's sending strong delusions and false prophecies into a prophet's mouth. He's the one that's going to destroy and kill. And in Job chapter 9 verse 22, it is all the same. That is why I say God destroys both the blameless and the wicked. Blameless are innocent people. God will destroy blameless, innocent people and the wicked. The book of Job Chapter 9, verse 22 explains he will destroy the blameless, innocent ones and the wicked. So if that, you know, that should get you to start thinking religious people. And he believes that there is no forgiveness unless someone dies and sheds blood. As the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 22 explains, In fact, the law requires that everything, that everything be cleansed with blood, and without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness. 
That is absolute bullshit. That is absolute bullshit. You do not have to sacrifice blood or kill somebody to be forgiven of sins. That's deception. Plain, point, fucking obvious. No going around it. No. No, you know, people try to stand up for scriptures and this needs to be pushed in people's faces. This needs to be handed out to churches. This needs to be said. Something needs to be spoken and churches, fucking Christian churches and Jew Judaism and Islam should be taken down. Because they're spreading deception. They're spreading evil. You're worshipping the beast himself. The secret book of John even explains the beast being the dragon, the beast who created the world, who is God of this world in creation of the world, which means he created the world. They say Satan is a God of this world, but Christians don't understand the meaning that he created the world. And, it's, and, it's, and whether you want to call it Satan or God, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because the secret book of John explains the beast and the dragon, Yaldabaoth, Yal, whatever, however, I don't know how to pronounce his name correctly because I've heard people pronounce it differently. Also, 666 represents the name of a law in Greek numericals. Look up Greek numerology, Greek letters. Look it up. 666 is the name of a law, the moon god. The pagan moon god, also called Yahweh, Yahuvah, of many, many names. I noticed another thing, that when Christians have visions or dreams from Jesus, I myself have had visions and dreams, but mine were much different from other people's. But I noticed they're, they're, they keep getting the feeling or the idea that Jesus is going to come back in their lifetime really, really, really soon. And that they've been having the feeling with it, that it's going to be within the next couple months or the next couple of years and whatever. Whether that's true or not, it doesn't make sense because Lucifer and Satan has not had his own church. He has not had enough followers to even fight for himself. And so being that the whole entire... USA is filled with Christian churches and pretty much nothing else. No satanic, no luciferian, no paganistic churches at all. And if there is, if they would have to be in hiding, is pretty ridiculous. So I don't think Jesus should be coming back anytime soon when the other religions and other people who actually have some holiness and sacredness to their old religions haven't even been brought back up to the surface yet. And are not even being paid attention to. So it's not, you know, oh yeah, Jesus, Jesus is going to come back and it's going to be the end of the world. How can it be the end of the world when there's absolutely no other churches and there's absolutely no other denominations of anything else except for Christian churches all around California and all around the U.S. And literally, there's no heathen churches, no pagan churches, no, no, no other religion but Christianity literally everywhere. So that's literally absolutely unfair, and it's actually been been bothering me, and it doesn't make any logical sense to, to conclude that the Lord would come back when there's no other churches set in place. And it says it has to be like in the days of Noah when the giants were roaming around, so we have to wait for all that to occur first and happen first before we even get to the idea of Jesus returning, because there's no giants roaming around, um, aliens are just barely starting to come to their service. Aliens are barely starting to visit us since the 1960s. So they're barely coming into the picture. And, uh, yeah. Every everybody wants to worship God, and the whole world wants to bow down before the beast, who is the God of Israel. But yet, people want to, you know, curse and pray against Satan or Lucifer when they literally have no idea what he does. They literally have no idea but their false ideas from the preacher and which the Bible doesn't even talk about Satan or Lucifer the, the way preachers and Christians talk about them. The Bible doesn't even talk about. So it's like false uh, preachings and doctrines of Christians that are say that they're close to Jesus and have a personal relationship with the Lord, but yet they're still spreading false bullshit from typical Christian ideas that literally have nothing to do with reality of who Satan and Lucifer really are, uh, really and truly are. And, uh, yeah, the five-pointed star, which is actually respected in Satanism, is earth, air, fire, wind, and spirit. And I think air and wind might be the same thing. I'm not sure if that's considered the same thing or if that's the same element or not. But, um... 
that's always been sacred. The elements have always been sacred and holy. And the goat has always been sacred and holy as a sacrifice, you know, in Judaism. That's why you see the goat within the star of Satanism. The goat has always been a sacrifice in Judaism. And basically, they pretty much put that in Satanism. And a lot of Satanists don't even realize or know what the actual symbolism means. And the goat is a very sacred animal. Obviously, it's a very holy animal if it's able, if the blood is able to forgive people their sins, if they worship this evil god. So apparently the goat and the lamb has a very holy or sacred blood that they have to shed for people's forgiveness, apparently, based on Judaism. And somehow that somehow got into the star and somehow correlated with Satanism, which is very strange how people change and misuse um, what used to be sacred and indoctrinate it as evil um, and change something that used to be good and saying that it's evil even when Christians have no fucking clue or idea what the fuck they're talking about. So, Why can you not use every person who's from a certain denomination, Christian, Judaism, they all have many, many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different denominations, and they all think that they're the only perfect way, and that you should and have to have these beliefs, and or else you're going to burn in hell, and very, very manipulative and mentally brainwashing to try to get people to be perfect or follow God's uh, ways when they don't really know who the true creator, perfect being of this universe is, in which I'm beginning to pray to, and is obviously not known. The Nag Hammadi talks about the perfect creator of the universe as the one that is unknown, that the human mind cannot perceive nor understand the perfect creator of this entire universe. In the book, in the secret book of John, on chapter, on page 11 of this book right here, it's called The Inexpressible One, and it says, The one who is the absolute perfect creator of this universe, the one rules all. Nothing has authority over it. It is the God. It is Father of everything, Holy One, the Invisible One, over everything, it is uncontaminated, pure light, no eye can bear to look within. The one is the invisible spirit. It is not right to think of it as a god or as like god. It is more than just god. Nothing is above it, nothing rules it, since everything exists within it. Everything exists within the creator of the universe, within the perfect, holy, inexpressible one that cannot be understood by the human mind or human comprehension. It says it does not exist within within anything. So this God doesn't exist within the universe. The universe and all that has ever existed exists within God, the creator of the universe. In the next page, since it is not dependent on anything, it is eternal. And I don't know why they, they put it, it is. I, I, I should say he is. He is absolutely complete and so needs nothing. He is utterly perfect light. The one is without boundaries. Nothing exists outside him to border him. The one cannot be investigated. Nothing exists apart from him to investigate it. The one cannot be measured. So you cannot investigate. You cannot measure. You cannot understand. Nothing exists eternally to measure the size or the magnitude of the creator of the universe. The one cannot be seen for no one can envision him. The one is eternal, for he exists forever. The one is inconceivable, for no one can comprehend him. The one is un indescribable, for no one can put any words to it. The one is infinite light, purity, holiness, and stainless. The one is incomprehensible, perfect, and free from corruption. Not perfect, not blessed, and not divine, but superior to such concepts. Neither physical nor unphysical. Neither immense nor infant nor, nor I can't read that word, infinitesimal. It is impossible to specify in quantity or quality, for he is beyond knowledge. The one is not a being among, among other beings. He is vastly superior but is not superior. It is outside of realms of being and time.
for whatever is within the realms of it was was created, and whatever is within time has been allotted to it. The one receives nothing from anything. It is simply, he simply apprehends himself in his own perfect light. The one is majest majestic, the one is measureless majesty, chief of all realms, producing all realms, light producing light, life producing life, blessedness producing blessedness, knowledge producing knowledge, good producing goodness, and mercy producing mercy. Generosity producing generosity. He does not possess these things, but he is these things. He is the one that creates these things. He gives forth light beyond measure, beyond comprehension. What can I say? His realm is eternal, peaceful, silent, resting before everything. He is the head of every realm, sustaining each of them through goodness. We would know nothing of the ineffable and nothing of the immeasurable without the help of the one who comes forth from the one who is the Father. He alone has informed us. The Father is surrounded by light. He apprehends himself in that light, which is the pure spring of the water of life that sustains all realms. He is conscious of every image everywhere around him, perceiving his image in the spring of spirit, pouring forth from himself. He is enamored of the image he sees in the light, the water, the spring of pure light, water enveloping him. He is self-aware through Enoya that came into being, appearing to him in the effulgence of his light. She's, she stood before him. This, then, is the first of the powers prior to everything, arising out of the mind of the Father, the providence, the pronoia of everything. Her light reflects his light. She is from his image in his light, perfect in power, image of the invisible, perfect virgin spirit. She is the initial power, glory of Barbello, glorious among the realms, glory of revelation. She gave glory to the virgin spirit, and she praised him, for she arose from him. This, the first thought, is the spirit's image. She is the universal womb. She is before everything. She is the mother and the father, the first man and the Holy Spirit. Thrice male, thrice powerful, and thrice named. Androgynous eternal realm, first to arise among the invisible realms. She, Barbello, asked the virgin spirit for foreknowledge. Foreknowledge is a knowledge before you even know that you have knowledge. It's like you know something before you know it. So Barbello is the first create creation, which is the female great goddess before all gods, beyond and more powerful and above the God of Israel, which explains it in this book. The spirit agreed. Foreknowledge came forth and stood by providence. This one came through the invisible virgin spirit's thoughts. Foreknowledge gave glory to the spirit and to Barbello, the spirit's perfect power, for she was the reason that that it had come into being. She, Barbello, asked the virgin spirit for incorruptibility. The spirit agreed. Incorruptibility came forth and stood by thought and foreknowledge. So incorruptibility, thought, and foreknowledge were the creation of the holy virgin spirit, which is before and a uh, part of Barbello, which is part of the creator of the universe. That is called the one who is beyond perfection, beyond time, beyond um, thought beyond understanding, beyond human perception, beyond human comprehension, um, beyond the aeons, beyond heaven, beyond kingdoms, beyond everything. The creator of the universe, everything that has ever existed that we cannot even know or comprehend exists within the creator of the universe. And that is the God that I search for. That's the God I'm going to start looking for. That is the God I'm going to start praying to. It is not a god in religion. It is beyond religion. It is beyond human understanding. It is a god that no human has ever really prayed to or I think understood in many, many generations or years. And so this video ends and speak about these things another time.